We have an update for the Colleen situation with Lily. I can't believe we almost forgot to catch up on it. Lily Tino made a video completely denying her harassing me and if you're wondering why it took me so long to even respond to that uh, i'll get to that in a second but here's quickly why her response was just laughably bad lily failed to mention that she led me into a discord call under false pretenses when her real motives were to film hold on there's a there's a text on the screen it says lily says hey random question is it pretty easy for you and jc to visit the u.s i asked because i've been meaning to plan a fun trip that could also work double as a work to also double as work okay Literally, everything about that, everything Lily just said makes complete sense. Work, it means old hands or it means TikTok. I just feel like this is so weird. Let's get through it. Oh my God. With me, if she were up front, I would have said no immediately. She didn't mention that I said no or I can't. What do you mean? Like, what do you mean if I was, if she was up front? How much more up front is she supposed to be before she gets you on a call? Do you know what I'm saying? She said, hey, could double as fun and work. Isn't that, what do you mean? Three different times. And even after that, even after I said no to doing porn, she still sent me a link to the porn studio and said it would be mutually beneficial. The okay, hold on. Even though I said no, she still sent me the link. Is that weird? Even after that, even after I said no to doing porn, she still sent me a link to the porn studio and said it would be mutually beneficial. The entire Okay, that's pushy. Okay, that's pushy. If you said no explicitly, see, is it back to the Tana Mojo thing where Tana's like, are you sure? Do you really want to? Are you positive? Yeah, okay, that's that's not good. Like, that's not ideal. Okay. Didn't even mention OF or even spicy content once. Instead, she mentioned it as a different kind of content. I recently decided to start making a new kind of content. And was Well, she's doing that for censorship reasons, right? Very nonchalant about saying it was normal for content creators to collab, which is true for something like TikTok, but is much more sensitive when we're talking about making literal porn. For is it though? Is it though? I don't know. Is it though? For the record, collaborations are super common among any kind of social media creator, be it this kind of content or other kinds of content. And this one shocked me. She edited the word OF out of her screenshot, the one that I actually posted to my video itself, uncensored. I received a DM. It's because you're not supposed to have it. Have you guys noticed I keep editing out the word only on YouTube because they demonetize you? OF is fine usually, but now they're, because it's 18 content, 18 plus. So like Lily's just editing it out because um, it's uh, it's bad for TikTok and stuff. Like I've already gotten videos taken down on my TikTok because of it. Yes, Alice, good point. One pushy point. Okay, we have one point against Lily for being pushy. Yeah, from her partner, which Colleen also mentioned in her video. And she'll probably say it's for TikTok terms of service. But here, let me just put that message on the screen and watch nothing happen to this video. Lily was trying to sanitize. You're so, she's such a paranoid conspiracy theorist. Lily's trying to sanitize the video to make it seem more digestible. Maybe you're just paranoid, bro. Ties the entire situation to make herself seem innocent. Like I got in many comments after they come back to my video being like, oh, I didn't even know that Lily was even talking about OF until I saw your video. And I've been free. That's crazy. What do you mean? Lily literally says like a different kind of content. Like she implies adult content the whole time. But maybe it's because we saw the whole conversation. I guess so. But that's weird. That's kind of weird. Frequently asked why I even went public in the first place because Lily had such a well-written response, right? But the reason I even went public was because I knew that immediately after I went public, Lily would publicly act like this. Right. And also, I had no idea they were monogamous. Most trans people I know are poly. So let's say, okay, She's monogamous. Well, even if she's monogamous, right? She could still be open. And she could have just said no. And finally, if you're wondering why I haven't responded till now, it's because the day I was going to respond last week, I was contacted by another victim named Cassie, who was tied up in this entire Vegas situation too. Her situation is very similar to mine, except for her, Lily stalked, groomed, oh. and refused to take no for an answer countless times, oh. to the point where on Lily's live streams, I was tricked because Lily was publicly saying that she already had someone to go to Vegas with her after I said no, referencing Cassie. Turns out Cassie never said yes. So I've been trying to say no, and she keeps pushing for it. 
It was strange, though, because on our TikTok lives, it sounded like you were a shoe in to go. Yeah, no. One of the primary oh. reasons that... Hold on. Rewind. How do I rewind? Cassie and I discussed Lily's plot to pressure both of us to film adult content in Las Vegas. Lily stalked, groomed, and refused to acknowledge Cassie's no. That's a big accusation. Lily misled me by pitching. It is a fun trip. I'm sorry. Are we just, like, throwing out stalker and groomed vibes? I mean, that's crazy. I mean, maybe? I ended up saying no three times, but Lily continued to talk. Okay, I want the receipts because that's that's a big deal. If that's happening, that's a huge deal. I mean, I don't know Lily. She could be the worst person ever. Go. Yeah, no. One of the primary reasons that Cassie said no was because of medical reasons. Lily would try to be like, oh, why don't you stop this medication? Why don't you stop... What did you say before? Wait, Lily says, what did you say before? It's been a bit of a journey. I didn't catch it. Also, it, it is a progesterone that makes you motion sick, question mark. Cassie sends a voice note. Lily says, I wonder if you went off it for a few days before flying, if it would make it easier. Oops. Okay. Longer message. LOL. Uh, I'm listening as they come. We could just do a phone call. Is there something wrong with this? Like saying like, oh, do you want to go off your meds a few days in case that helps you fly better? Is that weird? I mean, it could be pushy. It could be either. It could be. It could be very pushy. And I could see a scenario where Lily's like, well, okay, but you could just get off your meds. That would be crazy. But also lots of people would suggest that, right? Like, oh, my medication's making me sick. I'll postpone it. Like, it's, I don't know. Like, the problem is I hate situations like this because it could be or it couldn't be. Right? Like, it could be, but it also couldn't be. And you have to be very careful before you accuse people of these things. But also... Stop that medication. Lily, someone should not have to stop their medication to have sex with you. That's ridiculous and predatory. She basically... All right, slow down there, buddy. ...didn't believe that I was telling her that it is quite severe. To the point where I don't like traveling. Lily had subscribed to her OF for months prior, told people in the Discord, including me, about Cassie herself. And when Cassie was being called out by Chris Tyson on Twitter for being too trans, which I think is freaking ridiculous, Lily swooped in all friendly, saying, come to our Discord server, we're friendly here, we'll understand you. And then not too long after, asked her to go to Vegas to do porn with her. She's been aware of you and has been following you on OF for quite a while. That's crazy enough. She knew who I was before that day. She talked about it. Like, she talk, talked about it multiple times. Oh. oh. In a Discord. Oh, she talked about it, yeah. What? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. That changes everything. Why hasn't she told me that? Cause, and I even told her how this happens to me all the time. Like, people, I'll meet, like, a set of friends, right? Mm -hmm. And then the second one of them gets me alone, they go, hey, so, um... I actually watch your content, and then I'm like, oh, so you're trying to fuck me. <laughs> and and it's so often, and I'm like, oh, this is the exact same. But this is the first time it's happened to me with someone like Lily. I honestly oh. hate to think. Well, that's bad. Wait, 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 wait. That changes everything. Because if Lily is the kind of person that pretends she doesn't know you, but gets to know you, that's, I, that's so creepy. That is so creepy. Okay, wait. If that is true, that is a no-go. Right? No go. Honestly, I would not trust Colleen with her communication style, but I definitely don't trust Lily. But you cannot be pretending not to know who somebody is and getting to know them as a friend or anything else. No, no, no. That's super bad. Right? Okay. So that's not good. Honestly, all these people feel very unhealthy to me. All these people feel very into the drama and the clout and like calling someone a groomer and a stalker. I, I, I mean... Those are very big words to me personally, like they mean something, but yeah, you can't pretend like you don't know who somebody is. That's crazy. That's super dangerous. That could be stalkery, right? <laughs> Taylor, Taylor, not a groomer, just a loser. <laughs> Toxic gossip train. God, that was such a good era. Oh, I remember exactly where I was when I first watched the video. <laughs> Oh, hey, talking about Colleen's. Let's go back to this Colleen. What could have happened to either one of us if we did agree to go to Las Vegas with Lily? And just because me and Cassie are trans sex workers, it does not mean we do not deserve respect or boundaries. And Lily decided to break all of those for both of us because she wanted to have sex with us. Okay, well, maybe she just wanted the clout. I don't know if it's really about having sex. 
fucks with you. The problem is, is they're framing this like Lily really wants to fuck us. And I was like, maybe Lily just really wants to use you for clout, which is very different. Also, maybe Lily just really wants to fuck you and all of it is very weird. I don't know. I don't know exactly what is happening. I can't read Lily's mind and I can't read Colleen's. But Colleen obviously feels impacted, which is valid. And Lily obviously feels like she did nothing wrong, which with Lily doesn't mean much since Lily's very weird. But also, I don't know if any of this is predatory in that traditional way. You know, I don't know if it's really grooming or stalking. Like, that's a very specific accusation. Either way, that's the update. I'm glad we're not involved with any of these people. I feel like ultimately, this is why I say, like, be very cautious about who you're collabing with and building networkings with and having associated with you. And that's why, like, I do uh, it's so hard, though, because, like, you don't want to reject people, but you also are like, uh, I don't feel safe interacting with you in the same way. Like, I'd rather move away. But also, it's not personal. It's like, we're not seeing each other clearly enough for me to feel safe in this space. Like, I would never feel safe with Lily or, or Colleen. I feel like they would not be able to see me clearly. And then there'd be a huge miscommunication. And then it would be horrible. And I think that's the fear is, like, if we're not communicating clearly, it could lead to a serious repercussion and maybe that's just like the neurodivergent like person in my brain that knows like if you don't play the script correctly um people will think you're something you're not like most people aren't you know malicious stalkers most people are just we like like nerds or weirdos or like their own little person with their own unique way of speaking yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Okay, hold on. You said, well, I don't know why this had to be drawn out in the public. I really think Colleen thinks she's doing something. You know, maybe she feels like if you see something, say something. I think that's what it is. I think Cat Black, okay, hold on. Cat made a video on this about um, the trans poly thing. Apparently, it's really, it's a stereotype to assume if you're trans um, you're polyamorous and I don't know that, um, uh, I don't know that bubble. I most, like a lot of the trans people I know are monogamous or poly. If look, this is how it works. No matter if you're gay or straight or whatever, if you're in the straight, like if you're in the monogamous bubble, you're monogamous, whether you're straight or gay or trans or nothing, whatever. If you're in the poly bubble, you're probably poly or open. So I feel like these two communities are very different. Trans people are not in the polyamorous community, but there are trans people in the polyamorous community. But being trans to me doesn't mean you're polyamorous. It just depends if you are in the poly communities, right? So I don't know. It's kind of interesting to have this stereotype, I think. All transgender women polyamorous. Let's discuss. So this topic came up in the recent incident between Lily Tino and Colleen. If you guys have not followed up on that, Lily Tino tried to pressure another user named Colleen, who is also a OnlyFans model. Um, Lily Tino apparently is an OnlyFans model as well, and um, tried to plan a girls trip that was essentially all about filming content with Colleen. Lily Tino made the assumption that because Colleen is a transgender woman, that she is polyamorous. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about that as a person who is polyamorous and a transgender woman. So first and foremost, I want to say that there's a lot more to that story. Please go look into it yourself. You know, there's a lot of very valid criticisms, but I wanted to focus on this particular aspect of that because I am polyamorous and I have some observations and I wanted to share them. So first and foremost, I go to a lot of different poly social events around the city and quite frequently, I am the only transgender oh. woman. Not always, but usually. So I really don't understand this assumption that a transgender woman would be polyamorous, I guess. Yeah, that is that is in a specific bubble. So Lily would have that association if she's hanging out in bubbles that are polyamorous and they also happen to have a lot of trans women there because that would make sense to me. You know, I don't know who Lily hangs out with. I don't know who her core bubble is, but like lots of trans people. I just, I don't think for me it ever mattered. It just mattered what community I was in and that would tell me if you were monogamous or not. I guess maybe that's a safe assumption to make within certain social groups, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, I'm speak I'm saying that as somebody who doesn't know very many monogamous people at this point, but frequently when I meet a transgender woman, she is monogamous. And sometimes that is for a very particular reason. Back when I would say that I was monogamous all the time, I know that a big reason why I felt that way was 
fear that if I was in a relationship with a cis man, um, you know, in most of the men. Oh, hold on. Kay says to Lily's credit, she said the community she was in, the most are poly, not that trans people are poly. Okay, okay. That I've dated identifies heterosexual, that he would want to open up the relationship in order to be with a cis woman because that is what he really wants, right? And I didn't want to participate in that. And so when I was clinging on to monogamy, it really had very little to do with how I actually felt about um, relationships and love. It had a lot more to do with my own insecurities and how my partner being able to date, being able to date other people might, um, you know, stoke some feelings of insecurity. So frankly, I have found that transgender people are more often monogamous than not. Um, yeah, but that's just a bubble thing. Like Kat said, it depends on your social bubble. Yeah, so Lily feels like she knows most trans people that are poly. Kat feels she knows most trans people that are monogamous. And I think I'm about 50-50 split if I'm being frank. But yeah, I guess there is a certain like genre of transgender person who is, I guess, more typically polyamorous than not. But if I'm being frank, when I was looking into this, I sort of got the impression, and I don't know how this is gonna sound. I'm not here to say Lily Tuno isn't trans. That's not what this conversation is about. But when she said that, it reminded me of the way that a lot of people who aren't trans will fetishize transgender women. What I mean by that is often when you are an openly- There is a lot of spe uh, speculation on whether or not Lily is trans. And I think that's a very difficult conversation to have out loud because that experience is an internal one. And so it's difficult for people to even be, they wouldn't, we wouldn't be able to know if Lily was trans or not. That is an internal experience she's having. Like she has to tell us if she's trans. We can't tell her if she's trans. Um, so I can understand that there's like that conspiracy theory going around that she's not trans and she's just using it to boost her ego because she's kind of a narcissist. Maybe- Right. We don't know that. But also, um, I don't think it matters. Like, I just don't think in this instant it matters. Right. Like, I just don't think it matters if Lily's trans or not. What matters is that Lily had an experience in which she communicated something. The person she was communicating with took it offensively. It then ensued a miscommunication and then accusations. And I feel like Colleen is being very inappropriate with the way she's throwing around words. And if she says she's being hyperbolic, then I'm here for it. I get it. I'm hyperbolic on my stream as well. But if you're being literal and you're like, this is an accusation I am making, well, then you better have the receipts, girl, because you can't just be thrown around the word stalker, you know? Me, transgender person, there's like a certain type of person who will interact with you in a way where they are only projecting things on you. And it just so happens that a lot of the things that they project onto you are about your sexuality, your your desire to be, um, I guess, hypersexual in a way, right? Like a lot of times when I interact with people who project these narratives onto me, it's always about me being more typically open-minded than the staff, than the average person would be, you know? Like a lot of men- Oh, hold on. Who wrote that? Uh, I feel like a lot of the LGBT spaces are more open to the concept of poly. You know, what's so funny is growing up gay, um, that was not common. It was actually like, frowned upon in most of the queer circles I grew up in in San Diego. To be fair, it's more conservative in San Diego County. But my friends were Democrats or whatever. My my gay friends were Democrats. And it was very taboo to be open or to have polyamorous relationships. And it became much more popular as I hit my later 20s. And obviously, I was in Seattle and I did polyamory for 10 years. And that was like a real experience. And all of the queer people were poly. But I will say growing up in San Diego, oh my God, absolutely not. And if you talked about it, uh, it was like, hey, it was like super weird, you know? But that's because I was in more monogamous circles. And that's all that it was. It wasn't that it was gay. It was that it was monogamous. Seattle is much less monogamous. I was in a just a basically non-monogamous. Even the people I nannied for, I nannied for a family who were like, hey, we have to tell you something. And I was like, what? And they're like, we are polyamorous. Actually, no, they are relationship anarchists. And I was like, oh, yeah, I know what that is. I'm poly. And they're like, okay, cool. And I was like, different communities, but I get it. We overlap. They go, but don't worry. We're not like one of those BDSM people. And I was like, <laughs> yeah, me neither. But like, obviously, I was in BDSM at the time. So it's like pretty funny that like even the open communities will like judge other weird communities judging weird communities. It's kind of funny. But yeah, even parents would be like, hey, just so you know, we're open. So we have like, you know what I mean? Anyways, the point is, depends on the bubble you're in. What's normal? That's why 
I try not to get offended when people ask me questions that my brain is like, why are you asking me that? I usually try to say, where does that come from? Why are you asking me that? Because we just come from different bubbles. So maybe they don't mean it offensively. Maybe they do. It's just like, I don't want to project my trauma onto people or my assumption that like it's a bad, it's like bad, you know? So I don't want to assume Lily's a bad person just because she asked like, do you want to do OnlyFans together? But, and I just can't assume someone's bad for asking that to a monogamous person because monogamy is such a specific definition and it matters depending on the bubble you're in, you know? I don't know. And assume that because I'm transgender, I, for example, put out a lot easier than a cis woman would. Which of course means that I have to constantly be defensive about that because I don't want people to make the assumption that I am someone who jumps into the bed with them purely because I'm transgender, right? That thought only exists because you fetishize, you know? And being fetishized mm -hmm. doesn't really feel great. And I can tell that that's maybe a little bit of how Colleen felt. I mean, it's easy to feel that way because Lily Tino assumed that she was polyamorous and down to collaborate with her, which basically means having sex with her. Um, just be Well, not necessarily. Like, you can collab on OnlyFans and not have sex. Am I wrong? Am I crazy? Are you guys all f***ing? I feel like, can't you just, like, there are so many other ways to collab on OnlyFans, but f Because she's transgender, right? And so... Lily Tino making that assumption, even though I know transgender people can make it, it, it just reminds me so much of something that someone who isn't trans would say about a transgender person. Because of course, when you're not living as a trans person, there are a lot of assumptions you will make, right? Like if your only exposure, for example, to transgender women is through sex work, only fans, right? Um, and you're so used to seeing themes of gender transition in the context of porn or sex, you know. I, I think the issue is like trans communities have been survival sex workers for so long that it feels like anytime you're doing sex, it's centered around that need for survival. Look, survival sex work is not good and people shouldn't be doing it. And we shouldn't have to have a system in place for people to do it. That's why I'm so frustrated with the way that um, Julia Fox is telling her story in her memoir. Because she's like a survival sex worker, but she's just like, she's like, I hated these men, but I made them pay me a thousand dollars. I hated the sound of his voice, but when I made him come, I felt powerful. And I was like, you're like 16. This is not okay. And then she's like, she peed all over my leathers. So I peed all over hers. I got her back. I was the dominant in this club, whether or not I was, you know, it's just like, what is the story that you're telling me? It was just so like romanticizing, like you're a child. Why are you bragging about doing sex work? Like, I'm just so confused. Like, what is this story? And she's not writing it as a child. She's writing it as an adult. So like, I feel sometimes like, I just feel like sometimes we're so traumatized that we don't understand like the thing we went through is not a normal thing, but because it's normal for our communities to be suffering, we think it is. Like there are gay kids that think they're not gay enough because they didn't suffer. Trans people shouldn't have to be survival sex worker, circers, sex workers because they're trans, right? Some people who are trans who happen to be sex workers can also just do it because they love it. I love the work that I do and I think there needs to be a place for people that do sex work because it's not surviving in the traditional sense. Survival sex work is specific. It means I don't really want to do it and I'm doing it to survive in a situation that is unhealthy and at the risk of my safety versus like, a lot of other jobs people do, there's laws and regulations and things in place that even though it's not the greatest job in the world, it's still within reason. You can do sex work well within reason, but not if it's in a survival sex work way. That's very specific. You can't be a survival McDonald's worker. Okay? Survival sex work is very, very, very specific. And we nobody should have to do it. It's not good. But you can do sex work. And that's different. Because it's a different relationship with a job obviously you are going to have a hard time looking at a transgender woman as existing outside of that context and a lot of you guys who've been following me for a very long time know that i used to present myself a very different way and largely that was because i wanted to avoid those projections I have not found transgender women to be more polyamorous than you know your average person but i do think that people who fetishize transgender women 
are going to see them that way. Hmm. Frankly, what I've seen more frequently amongst transgender women is this desire to adhere to very harsh binaries within the context of relationships. This often means monogamy. Um, I follow a lot of transgender women on here and very few of them are polyamorous. A lot of them are, you know, focused on meeting a man to be in a relationship with mm -hmm. forever, right? And I think that's a little bit more common, right? Mm -hmm. I think that's a little bit more common. But as long as transgender women are sexualized and fetishized in the way that they are in our society, people are going to make these assumptions, right? And there's a longer conversation to be had here about the fact that Colleen being a sex worker doesn't mean that she wants to have sex with you. It is work, right, right? right? And then also the fact that polyamory is more than just sex, right? Even if she was polyamorous, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that doesn't mean that she wants to have sex with you. That doesn't mean that she... But isn't that why Lily asked? And then she could have rejected her? Look, I'm not team Lily, for the record, right? Lily seems incredibly entitled. That's why I don't like Lily. She's incredibly fucking entitled. And I don't like that about her. I just feel like in this situation, I feel like something is missing. Like somebody has a DM they haven't shown. Like something must have happened. Because like if you were that worried about Lily, why were you friends with her in the first place? She's open to having sex with you specifically, especially if you're her friend, right? Like polyamorous people still have boundaries. True, polyamorous true. people still um, have discernment and the mm -hmm. ability to say no. Just mm -hmm. because they can do something doesn't mean they necessarily will. And so in a lot of ways, there's mm -hmm. just a lot of misunderstandings about that in this entire situation. And my heart does go out to Colleen, who has felt like her friend was trying to come at her like that. Are all Okay, like I, you know... Yeah, I think what's happening is, like, it's probably too triggering for everybody involved in some way. But I, yeah, I, I don't think any of us are, like, super big Lily fans or something. But I also can't understand exactly why Colleen is so offended. Like, I just can't get it. But I'm, you know, I'm trying to think of what the scenario is. But then, again, like, maybe, maybe she's in that strict monogamous bubble. But no, she can't be because she's doing OnlyFans. Look, most strict monogamous people don't do OnlyFans. If she was in a bubble where she was a very monogamous and didn't do OnlyFans, then I'd be like, for sure. But even if you're monogamous and do OnlyFans, you could still be interested in having partnered. In my brain, I think it's not that weird to ask somebody who has an OF if they want to collab. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure how I feel about this still. I'm still very confused at this update. I would love to know, is there something we're missing? I mean, again, I don't think Colleen's wrong for feeling upset. I think Colleen is wrong for calling Lily evil things when we're not sure if Lily's engaging in that version of evil, evil in the philosoph philosophical sense. So I'm not sure. Let's see. Kay says, I can understand feeling let down or upset that you think your friend only wanted to have sex with you. However, that's not the same as grooming or stalking or harassing. Exactly. And at the same time, I can see that. Like I've, I've definitely had friendships in the past where I'm like, have you wanted to have sex with me this whole time and you didn't tell me? Because that's fun weird versus just coming out and saying like hey are you interested in me i'd love to have sex with you and i've been hurt by friends that like were friends with me for a very long time and then i realized like oh like have you been thinking about it this whole time when you gave me the impression you weren't interested because that's what's weird it's not weird to want to have sex with your friends it's weird to not tell your friends and then bottle it up inside and then bring it up years later and be like i've wanted to have sex with you and i was like oh that like changes how all of our interactions have gone. That changes it for me. You know what I mean? I don't think it's weird to want to engage with other adults in an intimate manner, in a safe manner. I think it's always the context of feeling lied to. Like nobody wants to feel lied to. Nobody wants to feel like I knew you, but I didn't know this about you. It just feels sad or like maybe even bad. Yeah, I think that's the issue I'm having with this whole thing. Sounds like they weren't very close anyways. So I'm not even sure what any of this means. Yes, or to make friends with someone under false pretenses if all you want to do is smash. Exactly. It's like, come on. I would love to see a world where people could just say, I'm attracted to you. Are you attracted to me? Um, do you think there's something here we could engage in? But of course, that's hard for people when they can't even and face themselves, let alone their own desires, right? So anyways, with that said, I still don't understand the accusations being put against Lily. But if Lily makes you uncomfortable, then you shouldn't be her friend. Don't be friends with people who make you uncomfortable. And you don't have, just because you don't want to be friends with someone doesn't mean they're a bad person. Just because you break up with someone doesn't mean they're a bad person. Sometimes you just don't feel seen by them. Sometimes it's just not a vibe. Sometimes hanging around them kind of makes you feel 
um, less like yourself in a way that just doesn't feel good. So you don't want to grow in a direction with them. That's okay too. Right? Like, I know it's weird and I know it's hard. Look, I deal with this all the time where I'm very specific about my friend groups and I feel like a lot of anxiety having too many people in my networking circles. But I'm I'm just like, I'm usually like a, I'd like to move in a different direction kind of person. But also it's because like, if I don't feel seen enough, if I feel like there's some level of weirdness, I'm just like, oh, you're not inner circle enough for me to do the emotional labor for this weirdness, right? So I feel like that's what happened here is like Colleen and Lily weren't close enough to do that emotional labor for each other. So they just like wrote them off as bad people. Yeah, probably. All right, that's it. We did it. Update complete. In my head, in real life while I'm dead, my belly's being fed and I'm okay. I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine. Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense. I've been nothing but blessed. So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking yeah i'm sick of reaching out for the truth and living life as a fool dun, 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 dun.